Hello everyone and welcome back to Lonely TTRPG, the solo actual play and review podcast. Today we are playing Her Odyssey by S. Kea. So this is one of the first solo games I had ever bought. It's really my introduction to solo games, even though I haven't sat down and played it until today. But when I first got started on Twitter, I found Kea's account, which is now called Mirlock, and she was advertising this game. And so in an attempt to support, I picked it up and now we're finally getting around to playing it. So Her Odyssey is a solo journaling RPG about a wanderer trying to return home or find a new home. Built on Caltrip Core, this game allows you to build a rich world, create a character backstory, explore ongoing adventure, or all three at once. With nothing more than a deck of standard playing cards and a handful of D4s. Meant to be played by a single player at a slow, contemplative pace, Her Odyssey can be completed in a few hours, or it can become a daily ritual, allowing you to take a metaphorical journey alongside your wanderer for up to two months per playthrough. So already a lot of stuff. So, diving on in, what we are going to need is at least 1d4, though five are recommended. A standard deck of playing cards, including the Jokers, and somewhere to record the story. So book, journal, blog, podcast, you name it. When creating your Wanderer, we are going to have 11 stat points to distribute as we like between three stats, vitality, quickness, and fortitude. Vitality being the principle of fire, bodily strength, the force of one's presence, roughly maps to strength and charisma. Quickness, the principle of air, a cunning wit and deft and dexterous body, roughly maps to dex and intelligence. And fortitude, a principle of earth, calm, steadfastness, self-belief, roughly maps to constitution and wisdom. So already we got some language that helps tie it into those of you D&D gamers who are looking for some way to expand out. For your wanderer, you're gonna take some time to answer the following questions. Name, pronouns, what we seek, what we left behind. Were we well prepared? There is someone or something that your wanderer loves or lost, what is that? And the shadow that follows your wanderer and haunts your steps. So for gameplay, gameplay consists of drawing cards from the deck determining what hazard lies before your wanderer, using your stats to meet the challenges, and writing about the experience. You can choose to write in first person or third person, just be consistent. Ideally, you should draw a hazard card from the deck each morning, spend the day considering your wanderer's journey and letting the story passively develop in your mind, then return to the game in the evening to make your stat checks and record the results. So for those of you playing the more longer form version of the game, that's how you would do it. You would draw your hazard card, ruminate on it throughout your day, and then come back and record your results. Sort of similar to tarot or horoscopes or any type of divination such as that. For drawing cards, when you draw a card, the numerical value of the card or the omen score determines how difficult the day ahead will be. Ace is 1, King is 13, everything else falls in the middle. And as usual with this type of stuff, the suit is going to matter. So diamonds are going to be villages, towns, cities, an illness, an abandoned dwelling, a false friend, a mirage or illusion, mistrust, rumors, and lies, an accident, a revelation. So most of your, it looks like most of your urban issues. Hearts will be farmland, meadows, moons, a key, curiosity, delayed consequences, an army, a trap, an accusation, a malfunction, a reflection of the wanderer's lost love. Spades will be forests, cliffs, deserts, a sudden change in the weather, ruins, an ambush, an oath, a misunderstanding, doubts and despair, a strange beast, a confrontation with the wanderer's shadow. And clubs, wastelands, mountains, the sea, a curse, a sudden change in terrain, a crime, a threshold, greed, a stranger in need, 
an unknown language, a natural disaster. So in order to overcome the hazard, your wanderer needs to use a stat appropriate to the method by which they want to address the problem. To make a stat check, roll a number of d4s equal to the value of the stat you're using and take the highest roll. So this is Caltrip Core, so you do have four possible options. Absolute failure, partial failure, partial success, absolute success. Based on the outcome of your check, determine what kind of new complications and developments might arise related to that day's hazards. Your wanderer may want to use their other stats to address these story developments. You may choose to make a stat check with one, two, or all of your stats each day, but each stat may only be used for one stat check per day. At the end of the day, total up the stat checks you made and compare the sum against the omen score. If your wanderer meets or exceeds the omen score, it is an auspicious day. They are able to overcome the hazard and pass through on favorable terms refreshed under their own power and possibly with new friends. If your wanderer does not exceed the omen score, it is an inauspicious day. They may have been chased away, suffered indignities, injuries, or escaped the hazard only at the cost of something important to them. Keep a tally of the number of auspicious and inauspicious days. Some omen scores are not attainable under the base system at the beginning of the game. This is, of course, intentional. Now, no wanderer is in full possession of their own fate. It is possible to roll a success for each individual check, but fail to meet the score. It is possible to fail each check, but have an auspicious day overall. This represents elements of chance, fate, or the world intervening. Take note and develop some of those themes. They may become intriguing, reoccurring elements of the story in their own right. Now remember, traveling is tiring and exhaustion easily catches wanderers on the road. When you attain an auspicious day, each stat that was used to contribute towards the stat checks decreases by one. Conversely, failure provides the opportunity for learning and growth and rest is restorative. When you attain an inauspicious day, each stat that was not used that day increases by one. Stats cannot exceed five or fall below one now for your jokers all right the first joker you draw is the false homecoming your wanderer reaches a place they believe is their lost home or can be a new home but they are thwarted in some way you may find they are a stranger here their home may no longer be what they remember or their needs and self-understanding may have changed beyond recognition then you will count the number of auspicious days that your wanderer has had this is now your fourth stat, hope. From now onward, any time you may subtract one from your hope stat and add it to the result of an individual stat check. However, if your hope stat ever reaches zero, your wanderer loses all hope and abandons their journey. After false hope coming, continue to play and track auspicious and inauspicious days, but they will not affect your hope stat or your doom stat. The second joker is the true homecoming. Your wanderer journeys come to an end. Take time to write about all that they have seen and done and the joys and scars that life has given them. And there are some variations. So if you get this and you find yourself comfortable with the base gameplay, then we have the heroic journey. When you roll a stat check, instead of rolling a number of D4s, roll just one D4 and add the value of your stat to the result. The outcome of individual stat checks still depends on the value of the D4, but this variant makes it easier to meet the day's omen score. The Hour of Doom. When you reach the False Homecoming, in addition to gaining the Hope stat, you will also gain the Doom stat equal to the number of inauspicious days your Wanderer has had. On auspicious days, no Doom is expended. On inauspicious days, automatically lose as much doom as you would need to reach the omen score exactly. If the doom stat reaches zero, your wanderer dies. The uncertain road is another variation. Each day after making your daily hazard draw, instead of placing the card in the discard pile, return the card to the deck and shuffle the deck. And the measured path. 
Remove the Jokers from the deck. The False Homecoming occurs after you have drawn 25 cards. And True Homecoming occurs after you have drawn 40. So, that is the rules. It's actually a relatively rules-like thing. You guys have seen the entire book. But, that doesn't mean that there isn't plenty of opportunity in here for a great game. And we are going to get into it. We are going to dive on into it. So, first and foremost... We need to set our board. So as usual, our name will be Steel Stash. Then we have Vitality, Fortitude, and Quickness. All right, and we have 11 stats to divvy up between them. That is just shy of an even split. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and go 4-4-3. Four, four, Why? Because I have a false sense of self-worth and i think that i am relatively even split on that type of stuff next up we're going to go ahead and add in our auspicious and inauspicious day counter all right and that brings us to the start we are now ready to begin so first and foremost we're going to take our deck and we are going to give it a good shuffle we'll be using our trusty home deck for this all right, and we are on day one, and we got ourselves the Queen of Hearts. So, we have just set out from our village, and we are attempting to really discover ourselves. We've lived in this small village. We're trying to see the wider world out in front of us and really get a sense of what it all what it all means what it means to be a person in this world in this vast confusing time as all these things have been growing and changing around us and immediately immediately we are met with let's go ahead and go with an army because after all one of the easiest ways to get out of rural society is by joining the army. Unfortunately, in this case, it may not have been much of a choice. It seems that we have met this army on the road and that they are attempting to pull us into their service. So, for our immediate reaction to this, we're gonna go ahead and try to use our quickness. I know, I start right, I, right off with my bad stat. We're gonna go ahead and try to use our quickness and convince them that we're not even worth taking. After all, look at us. We're some poor scrawny farm kid. Totally not worthwhile to take on this wild military adventure. And we got a three. All right, so that's going to be a partial success. We managed to convince them that uh, they don't want us. However, there's a complication. They seem to want a little bit of, uh, they seem to want a little bit of sports. You know, not one to let, not one to let anything go away, not one to let entertainment slip away. They decide that they want to have a little contest with us. And yes, this is going to be a vitality contest. So they wish to, they wish to have a rock throwing contest because after all, you know, um, uh, it is a popular it is a popular training technique slings that's what they're called they want to have a little target practice with slings just to just to see how the locals stack up in the area and we got a four out of that so we got an absolute success so we managed to we managed to perfectly nail all of the targets that they had prescribed for us it didn't really matter how many targets they set up we nailed them all and with that, we did manage to intimidate them a little bit. They still don't want us in the army, luckily, but they do want us to, like, they are not going to harass the surrounding area as much. Because after all, if you guys have never heard accounts of ancient armies being harassed and pelted by slingshots then go check it out. It is actually very detrimental to soldier morale. I can tell you that I can tell you that nobody likes just having random stuff hucked at them. So 
yeah, they're they find themselves concerned that these guys are going to be able to hide out in the area and you know basically just keep them from getting a good rest if they mess with the people. So they decide not to mess with the people in the area. And that's going to go ahead and bring day one to a close. So at the close of the day, we did manage to uh, we did manage to successfully keep the army from harassing our people. Unfortunately, unfortunately, there was no way that we were going to be able to do anything worthwhile today. It was an inauspicious day for us. So we go to bed tired and a little scared, honestly, that encounter with the army and the force conscription, the near force conscription, that was, that was a little nerve wracking for us and not something that we want to deal with on a regular basis. So our hearts going, our hearts pounding, and we are just happy to be happy to be away from that. But as an inauspicious day, our fortitude, which is the one set we did not use today, does go up by one. So we are now at max fortitude. We are now on day two. And for day two, we get ourselves the Ace of Spades. So on day two, we're going to find ourselves in the forest surrounding us. Sorry, just took a little break to draw a draw a little map, leaving our homeland behind us and going into the forest surrounding our clearing. And... It is it is a dark and it is a dark and scary place in this forest. This is like this is beyond just the this is beyond just the normal woods that pop up in some of the like the farmlands that get abandoned and whatnot. This is a full on forest. It this is one of those deep dark forests and we're kind of we're kind of hanging out by the edge. We really don't know if we want to go in, honestly, because, you know, this is this is scary. There's overgrown vines and whatnot. We're not even sure how we could get into the forest. At least that's what we're telling ourselves. So let us go ahead and let's go ahead and roll our constitution. Or I'm sorry, our fortitude, just to see if we can summon the force of will necessary to take the steps into that forest. And our highest roll was a three. Yes. Yes, we make our way into the forest. We are able to summon enough courage to push ourselves past the past the threshold. We do find a little bit of a game trail from what looks like a deer or something that would come for the come for the food and the ease of uh ease of produce in the lower lands, but prefers to make their home in the in the darker more secured forest areas and we managed to push our way through unfortunately i would say that as we're doing that we start to get tangled up in some of the vines and everything we're not as sure-footed so we are going to roll vitality just to see if we can force our way through everything and get where this path sets itself off to be a little bit easier and that is a two that is a two our foot continues to get caught and stuck and we find ourselves stumbling and falling. And after one such, after one such, we are going to sit there and we are going to sit there and like wonder if it's, whenever it's even worth trying to push through, we are off to a great start. We already got ourselves stuck in the forest and now we just have to keep our wits about us just to see if we can continue on. And yes, we rolled a four. Absolute success. Absolute success. So after after a little sit and pout, because, you know, sometimes you have to sit and pout. I'm not going to lie to you guys here, all right? You know, sometimes you just need to sit and have a cry and dust yourself off and get up and then get after it. And it seems that that helped out. That helped clear our head a little bit. We remember the knife on our on our belt. And we're like, oh, yeah. And we start cutting away at the vines and we start making our way a little bit easier. It definitely would have been easier if we were a little more prepared. And we just kind of we just kind of woke up and decided to go exploring. We got a little bit of food and whatnot, but nothing like a machete or anything like that. Nothing to really help out with this growth. But we are not without resources and we did manage to use those resources. Now, at this time, I know some of you who might be thinking, "Hey, Steel Stash, 
ace is only worth one on the omen score, why did you roll all three stats? You were going to get an auspicious day regardless of what happened. Now you're going to have to drop all of your stats down one. And that's because I decided to play my own variant rule where I will not stop a day until I get an absolute success, an absolute failure, or I run out of options. So I have three options that I can do if I get an absolute success. That means that, hey, I have succeeded in all the challenges for the day. If I get an absolute failure, that'll be, hey, I failed in all the challenges for the day. Or if I run out of options, it would just be, I ran out of the day. That is how I'm personally playing it. That is not listed in the rules. The rules are a lot more light, so you can interpret that as you want. But that is how I'm choosing. And as that is all my stats and an absolute success, then that means that we have had an auspicious day as we find a little clearing and we settle ourselves down. Like I said, unfortunately, I did have to use everything to get to this point. So all my stats are going to drop by one. So at the end of day two, I have three vitality, four fortitude, two quickness. And we settle ourselves down for a little bit of sleep as we get ready to go into day three. Day three is going to be the 10 of diamonds. So again, diamonds are going to be villages, cities, towns, illnesses, abandoned dwellings. I would say we're going to go with abandoned dwelling. As we continue through the forest, because we will not swap this forest out until we get another terrain change. As we continue through this forest, we are going to find a cozy little abandoned cottage. At least it looks like a cozy little abandoned cottage. After all, there are a bunch of cobwebs. It's still relatively early in the day but there are no lights on inside walking up to the door you can see that it's ajar and off the hinges and it's ajar it's off the hinges and like it's covered in dust and cobwebs as you peek in through the little opening so we are what are we gonna do what are we gonna do we're gonna use some of our quickness to see See if we like anything that's in there. See if we can kind of figure out what's going on with this place. Not going to lie, I'm kind of hoping for a bad roll here. But I got an absolute success. Outstanding. So this, like, as we peek in, because we have been filled with stories of hauntings and ghosts and village witches and everything like that. We are going to peek into the... We're going to peek into the peek into the door and just make sure that the place is not haunted. But, but luckily through our quick thinking and our remembrance of things, we know that this is not one of those haunted locations. So we know that it is a safe place to occupy and we go ahead and do so. We will gently move the door aside. And we will make our way inside. And as we head in, we see that, that there's still the remnants of a table. There is a bit of a straw and now rag covered area on the floor. But that's okay. Because, I mean, we're going to unroll our bedroll near the old stove on the other side of the cottage. And gather some, gather some sticks and make ourselves a cheery little fire. It's been a rough three days and... We are going to, we're just going to try to relax a little bit from that. Unfortunately, that does mean that today was an inauspicious day. We did not get the best out of anything. We are, we are tired. But the bright side is two of our stats did go back up. So at the end of day three, we have a abandoned cottage. We have a vitality of four, a fortitude of five, and a quickness of two. And that is going to bring us to day four. And for day four, we got ourselves the five of diamonds. We got ourselves the five of diamonds. So as we wake up on day four, we're going to feel a little bit of a cough, a little bit of a, uh, we're not, we're not feeling too great. Like three days on our own in the middle of nowhere. And we have, yeah, we caught something. We got a little bit of a bug going on. I might be projecting because I do have a little bit of a bug going on myself, but it is not from it is not from spending three days out in the middle of nowhere. So first things first is we're gonna go ahead and try to use our we're gonna try to use our fortitude in order to kind of push past these initial feelings. 
you know, just to get up and get moving. You got to get up and get moving, first of all. Like, yes, yes, if you're sick, you need to take, you need to take it easy. But if you are able, you need to get up and get moving just to help yourself out a little bit, at least to help the mind out a little bit. And that's what we're attempting to do here. And we got an absolute success on that as well. So we get up, we start moving around and, you know, after taking care of, after taking care of ourselves a little bit, we realized that, you know, it, we were just kind of blowing it out of proportion. We were not as sick as we thought. We were not that sick at all. And it just took a little bit of movement to get our body to go, yeah, no, you got it. You got it. Yep, we're going to pack up all our things, and we're going to make our way out of this little cabin and move on from there. But as we move, we do, unfortunately, we unfortunately don't get a whole lot of ways because, ding dang, we did spend a bit of time this morning feeling bad for ourselves, and that's going to round out our day. We didn't get to do a whole lot. So unfortunately, we also did not meet our... We did not meet our omen score, which should have been a fairly easy omen score to meet, but we have had yet another inauspicious day. But that is going to be that's going to be our gameplay. We're going to call that we're going to call that it for today. So that is her Odyssey. So as you can see, it is definitely a fun little it's definitely a fun little game. It's very rules light. It is very heavy on you, the player, and what you're going to do and how you're going to interpret everything in order to in order to progress the story. It definitely works. It definitely works nicely as like a story prompt. So, if you are into a more story ideal, then this is this is a good game to check out. This is definitely something to check out. Just the just a little bit of prompts in there. We already got ourselves a a kind of fun little story of a youth who wanted to see the world, who managed to who managed to talk his way out of getting snatched up by some soldiers and is now exploring the depths of the forest right outside his homelands and everything that comes with that so we got the abandoned cottage which may or may not have been a you know which may or may not have belonged to a witch or something along that nature so we already have some we already have some good outlines and some good beats for that but we have ourselves a fun contemplative little game it's definitely nice to just like sit back and kind of unwind like i got it some of the language and everything seems seems more adversarial than the game actually is. The game the game right now is really nice, really chill, really just really relaxing. You know, it's again, a lot of that might just be my interpretation and my particular playthrough on this one. And if I tried it at a different time with a you know, in a different mindset, who knows? I might like you could definitely make this a little bit darker of a game if that's the vibe that you were going for. You can make it as light and colorful as you want if that's the vibe that you're going for with that. Like, not everything has to be not everything has to be grim dark to be interesting. Like, her Odyssey could very easily be the story of could very easily be the story of a of a village village witch rolling around collecting herbs, making potions for everybody, and the prompts and everything relating to what she has to deal with for that. Again, this is a five-page, this is a five-page game. So there is not a lot there to get in your way. And if if I'm being honest, I think that's my biggest complaint is because of how little there is and how freeing it is for you to be able to play with your own imagination, it can make it a harder game to approach. Just because you don't always have the headspace, you don't always have the spell slots to come up with all of that stuff. Like, yeah, the the suits have different... The suits have different ideas for and prompts in them, but they're not like 
They're not like some of the prompts we've seen in some of our other games. Just a just a vague collection of word association. And you kind of have to play your own word association with that. So this isn't something that you sit down and run through. All right, you're going to have to sit down and you're going to have to stop and you're going to have to think and you're going to have to go yes or no or maybe. And you're going to have to pause and run through some different word associations as you think of how you want to respond to some of these aspects, which is not a bad thing. That is definitely a selling point of the game. It's just for me, I definitely have to be more in a mood for it. It's not something that I can just sit down and go, yes, randomly want to play her odyssey. No, I, I have to, I have to be in a headspace for this, but, but, because of how little there is, that means that there's so much that you personally can bring to the game. And I think that's kind of the value of this and where some of the interesting parts of it are is just the community that Kea is building is great because she is building her own community. She has her own Discord and you can find it on her Twitter. And that community like talking about their own experiences and whatnot, like the game ends up revealing at least what type of person you are at that moment. Again, because of how freeing everything is, you have to bring a lot of yourself into it in order to fill it out. It also might potentially be a good one for, it might be a good one for the children's as not a whole lot of rules. So your young kids just getting into this type of thing definitely adds a lot of definitely has a lot of potential free-form imagination exercises you can do with them. So her odyssey is on itch.io. All right, you can find it at mir-lock.itch.io slash her-odyssey. Links down below. You can find Kea at mir underscore lock on Twitter. And this game is a name your own price game, which means you can get it for the low, low price of at least a dollar because creators deserve something and make sure that you do leave a review for her as that will really help out and speaking of reviews don't forget to like and review this all right let me know how i'm doing uh like hearing from you guys really enjoyed the comment that i got last week really enjoyed the comment i got last week from kit with the can stickle saying that they really enjoyed the podcast and that my voice acting and enthusiasm are what makes it so thank you very much for those kind words. And if you want to leave your own kind words, you can do so at BDDC underscore pod, or you can reach us at blackdragondungeoncompany at gmail.com. And of course, we have a Patreon if you really love us and super want to support us. For as little as a dollar a month, you get early access and access to all of the games that we create. And that can be found at patreon.com slash Black Dragon Dungeon Company. I have been Steel Stash. Thank you for coming along. And remember, I must stash y'all to stay awesome.